69 trillion hello beautiful people shalom money makers we got some shiba inu updates we got bitcoin news beautiful smile smash the like button and let's get into it so the crypto market has picked up a little bit <laughs> It's uh, like uh, the groundhog that, you know, peeks out a little bit, right? As uh, soon as groundhog day, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But anywho, Bitcoin did get all the way up to 43,600, pulled back a little bit. Uh, we saw Shiba Inu go over the 900 level, right? And then come back a little bit as well. And Ethereum popped over 2,400, but did not uh, recover that movement interesting ethereum is showing strong movement in the past few days right uh we're seeing the total crypto market go up 1.18 percent here and with very interesting with bitcoin and we'll get to the bitcoin news in just a second <clears throat> it has been able to detach a little bit uh from the triangle right so the bullish pennant you can see it came to the end more or less i don't think it will get to this this zone it seems it detached right from the from the the pennant and the pennant is over right basically we'll be able to delete it soon because you know unless you say ah oh, you pull it out here and you make something like like it does it doesn't fit anymore so it seems that this uh, formation is over uh, and now the question is where do we go from here you know on the one hour chart bitcoin is pulled up to the top of the stochastic full on the four hour chart it's in the middle so it does have a little bit in the larger time frame but on the daily it's all the way at the top right so on the one hand we need a little bit of a pullback but we have seen bitcoin many times with with momentum live on the top of the stochastic full on the daily for a while so i wouldn't be surprised if we do start see a, a movement here in the crypto market in the near future um it will happen you know you, you won't realize it's happening and it already will happen right <laughs> Breaking news, Fidelity now allocates 1% to spot Bitcoin in their all-in-one conservative ETF. So this is interesting, right? There's a special all-in-one ETF, and now Fidelity is exposing their clients if they want it or not. <laughs> you have to choose, right? It's investment-grade debts, U.S. equities, international equities, Canadian equities, and 1% of cryptocurrencies with the Bitcoin ETF global equities uh and so that is the new uh, allocation uh and if we go and we look at uh, the digital asset say they are bullish on the short mid and long term uh, for bitcoin so this is uh, on for fidelity digital assets they are positive for the short term the midterm and the long term outlook on uh bitcoin um so so sell <laughs> Um, so, you know, one of the biggest managers uh, in the world is continues to be very bullish on the cryptocurrency market. And this is, oh, wait, wait a second. I just saw something interesting. Caspa just uh, popped 15%. Interesting what's going on there. Um, I didn't see that until now. Um, we'll, look, we'll look at that uh, later, what's going on there and why did it uh, suddenly pop up here, right? Interesting. Um, so... You know, m massive money managers uh, are coming into the crypto market, but you know, there's still a lot that aren't aren't here, right? If we take a look at this tweet, right, it's a rundown uh, on uh, the wealth management's, uh, you know, the financial advisors and what is currently happening with their uh, potential buying of these ETFs. So, LPL is waiting additional three months before allowing advisors. Uh, to sell Bitcoin ETFs to their clients. Uh, Edward Jones does not have access offer to any Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, they have 19,000 financial advisors. So you have here around 40,000 financial advisors um, that are still not offering their clients Bitcoin ETFs. So, you know, retail maybe, people that are investing by themselves, they know what's what's up and what's going on. But, you know, regular people that let the financial advisors do it for them are not getting the exposure because the financial advisors are not offering them the products. Um, so this is uh, an interesting situation, but it could change in the near future. Last night, we talked about the fact that 
Binance had removed uh, some assets. And in that uh, talk that we had, right, when we reported on this, uh, we were assured that uh, Shiba Inu uh, was not one of the, the assets that were removed from a Binance. Now, you might say, well, that could be, a, you know, maybe that's not the end of the world. But currently, Binance is the top dog uh, on volume for Shiba Inu, although it's actually very nicely distributed between exchanges because there was in the last 24 hours, there was almost 100 million uh, volume and only 10% was um, Binance. It used to be before all their issues that the volume was around 30, 40, even 50% of all the volume was coming from Binance. So it seems that there is a better distribution of the trading of Shiba Inu recently uh, and that's a positive thing. You don't want all of the um, all the trades happening on Shiba, uh, on one exchange. I was interested uh, how much Shiba Inu is actually owned by customers on Binance. So if you go to Binance.com and you look at the proof of reserves, you can see all their assets, what they own, how much they have on Doge and and um, and Shiba Inu, and you can see also, uh, you know, how much Bitcoin they own and the USDT and uh, and all their assets basically, because they needed to do this uh, back in the after FTX when they had to prove that they had the back backing of all of the customer um, uh, value, right? Uh, and there is a spider here on the table, <laughs> um, so you can see here that customer net balance is 66 billion sorry 66 trillion shiba inu and the binance net balance is 69 trillion and this was very interesting to me why first of all they have a three trillion um uh what's the word difference but uh, that's not the word that i wanted uh, leeway they have about three trillion leeway here um between the actual customer balance to the actual uh amounts that they have backing but, but what's interesting here to me a little bit more than the fact okay they have the backing and they have 69 trillion so it would be an issue if they decided to delist shiba you know like where would all that 69 trillion go right well it wouldn't go the only thing that would go here was the three trillion right 66 trillion or 67 almost trillion is customers uh value right so they couldn't just sell it right the the customers would have to sell it right um and then they could sell it after the customers sell but what's more interesting here is the fact that there's 67 trillion of you uh, well it's not of you but 66 trillion of shiba inu out of the 589 trillion right that is on binance meaning it's on the exchange it's not on external wallets uh, <laughs> um or not on even you know not even the wallet's uh hardware wallet but on a metamask or a trust wallet or an owner wallet or or any other wallet right um but it's on the exchange and that was surprising to me and every time i see this i get more surprised um, that people are just lazy right <laughs> um they keep their assets on the the exchanges Right, and they do not uh, send it out to uh, external uh, uh, wallets. Um, listen, we talked about this last night. Um, you know, if you feel comfortable doing it, then fine. I think that exchanges are used for trading, day trading, swing trading, copy trading, leverage trading, trading, swapping. But if you don't need, then transfer it out. Like people get um, cheap. They don't want to pay the gas fees. I think this is what happens, especially on the Ethereum network that are sometimes high. And so you say, well, it's going to cost me 30 bucks to transfer it in and out. I'll just leave it there, right? Uh, but we saw that with FTX, people are now getting back the value, but not face value. So they're getting the value at the day of bankruptcy. They're not getting the value of today. So they lost a lot of money, people that, you know, had their uh, funds on FTX, right? They didn't lose everything, but they lost a lot. Right. So that could tell us, hey, you know, wise up a little bit. I'm not saying have no assets on the exchange at all time, but just be careful and know that there is a risk if you're leaving your assets on the exchange. Right. Be careful out there and don't click on any links and don't send people money that you don't know, even if it looks like me or another influencer. It's a scam. Right. Um, smash the like button. 
Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Check out the links in the description down below. And like I always say, let's make a lot of money.